Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Savile and welcome to MEMCAS PACES Resources. This session is aimed at candidates who are preparing for the PACES exam. Now in our last video, we covered the format and the mark scheme used in the PACES exam. And this week, we're going to be looking in depth at the respiratory examination and go through the correct technique when performing this examination in station one. By the end of this video, and with independent practice, we expect learners should be able to, one, perform a thorough respiratory physical examination, and two, demonstrate the correct technique when checking for CO2 retention flap, clubbing, and chest expansion. A subsequent video will look at how to interpret and present clinical findings in the respiratory exam, with examples of the clinical discussion with examiners. So just as a reminder, this is the mark sheet for the respiratory exam. Whilst examining the patient, you'll be assessed on your ability to perform a correct, thorough, fluent, systematic examination, showing professional technique on palpation and percussion and auscultation of the chest. You'll also be assessed on maintaining patient welfare throughout. So treat the patient with respect and sensitivity, ensuring their comfort, safety and dignity at all times. You'll have 10 minutes for the station, six of which will be taken by the clinical examination, with four minutes to present your findings and discuss the case with the examiner. First of all, you should make sure you are wearing appropriate PPE and introduce yourself to the patient, checking that they're comfortable. Hi there, my name's Rachel, I'm one of the doctors examining today. Am I alright? I just had a quick listen in the examination of your chest. Are you in any pain at all? Fantastic. You should take a general observation, looking at what's around the bed space. Are there any inhalers or walking aids nearby? And how does the patient look generally? Are they comfortable? Is there increased work of breathing? Do they look cachectic or overweight? You might want to ask them to take a deep breath in and you're looking for any deformity or unequal chest expansion. Am I right to have a look at your hands? Things you want to look out for in the hands are clubbing, which should be checked by looking at the fingernails from the side or by bringing the fingernails together and looking for the loss of diamond shape between the nails. Other things you might note will be tar staining or a CO2 retention flap or tremor, which could be signs of medication overuse or chronic type 2 respiratory failure in conditions such as COPD. Next, you would check the pulse. Is it fast, slow, or normal. Then have a look in the eyes. Is there pallor, which might be a sign of anemia and can cause breathlessness? And then have a look in the mouth at the colour of the lips and the tongue. Is there cyanosis present? Next, I would move on to the neck to check for any cervical lymph nodes and tracheal deviation. This step can often be forgotten, so by putting it here as you go down the neck, it helps us to remember it. Other times, candidates check lymph nodes when the patient sat forward before you're about to examine the back. So I'm just going to have another feel of your neck. Feel if the trachea is central. You must warn them it could be uncomfortable before you put your hands on the neck. Then you want to check for an elevated JVP, which could be a sign of core pulmonale. So moving on to the chest, you would want to have a closer look for scars on the front, the back and under the arms. Some scars can be quite subtle, for instance if they've had a thoracoscopic procedure. Next is palpation. You want to check for chest expansion with your hands flat on the chest and thumbs away from the chest wall. You're looking for an expansion of about 5 centimetres. 
Here you're feeling for vocal fremitus. If you can say 99 for me. 99. Put your hands in the intercostal 99. space and feel for the vibration as the patient 99. says 99. You'll feel more vibrations if the area is dense, for example in pneumonia, the sound waves travel best through solids. Vocal fremitus will be reduced if there's an excess of air in the lungs or a thickened chest wall. You must note, a pleural effusion will have reduced vocal fremitus as the fluid dampens the vibrations as it goes from air to fluid to solid. Next, you percuss the chest. Notice the technique with one finger laid firmly and flat across the chest in between the intercostal space and tapping from the wrist. You want to percuss in a number of spaces, including the front of the chest, the axilla and the back. For auscultation, you should listen above the clavicles and the four anterior zones and the axilla. Then check for vocal resonance by asking the patient to whisper 99 as you place the stethoscope on their chest. You'll want to repeat the process on the back. I'm going to get you to sit forward for me. I'm just going to have a look first. So inspection. Palpation. cushion. And auscultation. Deep breaths in and out through your mouth for me. Some people prefer to examine the back first. Neither way is wrong. Before you finish, check for sacral edema and peripheral edema, and you may wish to examine the axilla or inguinal I'm lymph nodes if relevant. Lovely, thank you. If you want to settle You should thank the patient and cover them up to maintain their dignity, and then ask for any additional bedside tests or observations you require. Thank you very much, that completes my examination. So, I would like to see the peak flow and also the observations chart to look for the oxygen saturations and the respiratory rate. So after you've completed your clinical examination and asked for any bedside investigations such as the observation chart and peak flow, you'll be asked to present your clinical findings to the examiner and you'll also discuss the case for the remaining four minutes of the station. So hopefully, this short video has helped you familiarise yourself with the respiratory examination. So our advice would be practice, practice, practice. You want to be slick and performing the examination in a logical order helps the examiner follow what you're doing. It means you're less likely to miss something out. Practice with a pacer's buddy on real patients on the ward, with friends, colleagues or partners. Practice getting the timings right. You'll get a warning when there's one minute left of the examination time, so you can use this to tailor when you need to slow down or speed up to complete the exam. Memcast have got some other MRCP related material. There's MCQs and Facts of the Week over on our Instagram page at mem.cast. We have weekly podcast episodes available on all streaming platforms. Our next episode looks at how to present your clinical findings and the potential discussions you may have with the examiner. So from everyone here at Memcast, 
good luck with your exam preparations. We'll see you again soon.